Good afternoon, everybody. Uneducated Economist here. Wanted to share a link with you guys to an article talking about the manufacturing in China and how this is slowing down dramatically and may end up going into a crisis scenario. So this is something that I knew was going to take place. It was something that we had talked about many months ago when I said that the retail was dying on the vine. A lot of people were you know, looking at the overwhelming consumer demand and thinking that this was going to continue on forever. And now I said it back then that this overwhelming consumer demand was false. It didn't truly exist. It came from a severe supply chain breakdown at the same time a stimulus came out. This wiped out the inventory levels and it caused a lot of people to start ordering. And now it wasn't just a matter of ordering to replace the goods that you have sold. It was ordering and being allocated against. It was ordering and being told that you may not get it for, you know, two times longer than what it normally take. When this started taking place, these allocations and these longer lead times, the people who were ordering this stuff started increasing their orders. And for example, we had experienced it here at the lumber yard that I work at where there was an exterior trim, and I mean, it happened on a lot of products, but for example, we had this exterior trim. Typically, we would want to order in, say, 30 pieces. We could get it twice a week, so an order of 30 would be about normal. We went to place the order for 30, and they said, oh, sorry, there's this allocation. We got to make sure that everybody can get some, so you're only going to get 10 pieces. And we're like, well, 10 pieces isn't enough. Well, that doesn't cover all the orders that we have. We don't need 30. We actually need 100 pieces. And so if all the stores start doing this, pretty soon the manufacturers, the dis distribution networks, everybody up the line, start looking at these intense orders that are coming in for like 100, even though they really only wanted 30. So this overwhelming orders that started hitting the manufacturers and distribution networks started increasing the amount of manufacturing that was going on. And so we saw that, you know, a year ago, that increase in manufacturing was just running rampant throughout the economies. And I knew it then. I said, once this material starts flowing into the system, we're going to find that all these orders that people had are going to fall off the cliff and that there's not going to be nearly as many people out there wanting all that stuff that they had ordered. And that's what we're finding now. Inventory levels are rising dramatically, like um, the wholesale warehouses or the liquidation warehouses. These guys are starting to become more prevalent and starting to you know, become overcapacity. Over <laughs> overloaded themselves. I have a hard time talking sometimes. But we're seeing that taking place. And we're seeing that the inventory levels rising is going to be a very painful situation for all the manufacturers out there, especially when it comes to China. Now, there's kind of a flip side to this that I've been thinking about as far as why China had gone into such severe COVID restrictions. Like they had zero COVID policy taking place and that if anybody got, you know, was sick, they had these like sudden lockdowns and these, you know, major halts to, you know, as far as like uh, transportation and just, you know, traveling yourself made it very difficult in China. And so they slowed the commerce down dramatically over there. And part of that was the slowing down in manufacturing as well. And so I kind of took this into consideration when I thought about the, the Cantillon effect and how the Cantillon effect would eventually destroy economies by driving in ever increasing amounts of foreign production. Now that's what we're experiencing here in the United States is the driving in of ever increasing amounts of foreign production. On China, they're on the other side of this Cantillon effect where they are increasing the amount of exports that are driving in new money coming into their system. So now there's a problem on both sides of that. If you are the nation who is importing new money, what ends up happening is, is that the people start enjoying this new money coming into the system. Once they start enjoying that new money, what they start finding is that they are competing with the foreign production out there. So this is one thing that I think China is going to try and try and keep from happening is that as this manufacturing really starts to increase within China, because they're the manufacturer of the world now, that's going to drive new money into the system. Well, I think they're going to try and prevent that from happening or at least try to hold that back some using the COVID as a restriction to keep the manufacturing from actually taking place. Does that kind of make sense? Like, I know it's counterintuitive to think about that you would actually want to hold back on manufacturing because it brings new money into the system. 
But I think that's really what the case is because if you allow that new money to continue to pour into the system, what you are gonna find is that you're gonna start bringing in ever increasing amounts of foreign production and start driving out your domestic manufacturing very much what had occurred here in the United States. So now the United States is going to try and hold back from bringing in any more production from foreign, from, you know, outside production coming into the United States and try to increase the production here within the United States. We saw that happen with like, you know, for example, with the chip manufacturing. I don't think it's going to work. I think the manufacturing here in the United States is far too expensive, but it doesn't mean that they're not going to try and prevent it from happening the importing of foreign production and then the try to expand the domestic production does all that kind of make sense so if they try to make this happen they can actually try and i mean it's all try i keep saying try because i just don't think it's actually gonna end up happening that the that the powers that be can actually prevent the cantillon effect from taking place so you can try and stop the importing of foreign production, try to increase the domestic manufacturing. The only problem is, is that the laws of economic nature are eventually going to come into play and people are gonna realize that it's too expensive to produce here in the United States and it's far cheaper to import from foreign production. And then the Cantillon effect starts to take place again. And then eventually when the new money turns off, everybody falls into poverty, so. I'm gonna leave it at that, I think. I don't know if I should really continue on with it. I've already kind of confused the situation, I think, a little bit on this one. But, I mean, if you kind of get it, like, you know, if you follow the Cantillon effect where new money comes into the system and the people who have access to that new money start purchasing foreign production, that's really where the problem starts to happen because as that foreign production starts to increase, it starts driving out the domestic manufacturing. That is what I think China is really trying to prevent from happening. And they're willing to take some pain to do it. Like if you can, you know, slow down the manufacturing and prevent that new money from coming into the system, well then hopefully you can slow down the Cantillon effect as far as the people who have access to that money start to import foreign production to compete with your domestic manufacturing. Does that kind of make sense? I think that's what China is trying to do. I mean, personally. And if you go and you look at like some of the property sectors right now, it's not like the government is stepping in to bail out these property developers. I mean, they're going to, it, it very much appears to me that they are going to allow a lot of this to fail and allow these, you know, property developers to default on their loans. I could not imagine what that's going to do to the property sector except for drive real estate property into the dirt make it incredibly cheap that is going to give the condition for family formation to start taking place in China which is really what I think they're trying to do so if they can inflict some pain right now on the people to get the property values down to a position in which that the average people can then buy homes they would most likely want to start you know start families at that point and because china is going into a population issue where they have an older demographics of people and not enough younger people to fill in their shoes they're looking to start family formations now okay uneducated economist you guys let me know